Hi, welcome back. At the end of our last episode, I just introduced the cross slide. Uh, now we're going to touch off the cross slide on some uh, some printing ink and some some Prussian blue, and let's see what the let's see how flat it is, shall we? If we hinge it, you can see it's hinging down on this end and down on that corner. So it's obviously not flat, must be quite concave, and that's what we see. Heavy bluing on the ends, nothing through the middle. So I'll have to scrape these ends first. Just taking a quick look at the, the other side of it. We would expect this to be convex, and yeah, it's, it's hinging in the middle, pretty much hinging on this point. And once again, that's what we see. Must have some sort of a burr or something that it's right touching on here, stopping it from, from laying down properly. In this episode, we're also going to break out the angle grinder. Kind of a consolation prize to our favorite fan, Nico. You know, needs a bit of a consolation prize after the, he tried to feed his hand to the cat and the, the cat rejected it, wanted something better to eat. So, bit of angle grinding there for Nico. This is steel rather than cast iron, so it's not that nice to cut to uh, scrape. I've never actually tried scraping steel with the Coborn power scraper. Very cool piece of British engineering from the late 50s, I guess. I'll put a uh, I'll put a link up in the top corner of the video. I did a, did a uh, review of this scraper a while ago. So it's still hinging on the ends. My guess is this is quite flexible. So I'll probably get a completely different uh, pattern or picture from the touching off. Whereas if I push down heavily in the middle, see I can fake a, a contact across the whole, th effectively flexing it through the middle. So I'm going to have to be very careful as I, when I touch off to just touch off very lightly to get a realistic picture. I've now done five passes with the power scraper and I think it's starting to come in. What you can see is I've slightly rolled off the edge and also you can see that I've slightly rolled off into each of the um, screw holes. I'm still not good, very good at keeping scraped surfaces flat all the way to the edges and not rolling off into, into edges everywhere. So need to look up in Connolly some techniques to improve that. Still probably have one or two more passes to go. You can see I'm still light through this area, but otherwise it's coming in nicely. Now after seven passes, I think I've got quite even coverage all through. Uh, the very ends tend to be dropping off just a little bit, but they're not really supported anyway. They overhang the saddle. So I'm gonna call that good enough and move on. 
Next up, to check the uh, flatways on the saddle, I need to blue up the cross slide as a master. So let's see how this looks. It's rather a light bluing, but I guess you can see there's a fair bit through the middle and then it drops off at the end. And on the, this side, it appears to be mostly touching closer into the V-way. So I'll get on with scraping that next. To scrape in this flat way, I'm gonna need a much smaller um, scraping tool to be able to get into this into these sharp corners in here. I'm need, going to need to make up something that's both thinner, narrower, and probably with a smaller radius. So that's the next task. My intention is to make the little scraper so that it can fit both in the uh, Coborn power scraper uh, using this sort of interface, but also maybe make that slot a little wider so I can fit it to my um, Sandvik hand scraper as well. So that's the, that's the plan. I'll make this scraper out of this piece of old scrap uh, sheet metal. While we've got the angle grinder out, I'll also use it to uh, cut a, uh, a gutter into that corner to make it easier for scraping so that the scraper's got something to run out into. So there's the tool holder, quickly chopped to size. Next we're going to need a piece of carbide as a tip for the cutting edge. Luckily, as a rather ham-fisted CNC machinist, I have a nearly endless supply of broken carbide bits. So in this case, I've got this nice little small 3mm piece, so I'll chop that off about here, I'll break it off here and braise it on. Here's my piece of carbide. I'll just Grip the bit that I want, maybe a little longer, and snap off the rest. Mm, might have broken off a little bit too short, I'll snap off a piece more. I guess breaking carbide's not really an exact science. It's a pretty tough one. So to braise these together, I've got some thin, uh, high silver content brazing rod, and I'll be using a little bit of um, flux. Let me start off by putting a wee bit of flux on there. And I'll, once the wire's warm, I'll dip that flux as well. Unfortunately, I don't own a um, oxyacetylene system, so I'm, I'm just using this uh, gas cartridge um, Bunsen burner, but that's why I use the high silver content wire because you don't need such high temperatures.
It's laying on a piece of uh, calcium silicate, which is a sort of a high temperature insulation. Well, let's hope that bonded. Now to grind the radius and the um, edges on this, first up I'm using my Klaxon uh, Mark 1 tool and cutter grinder. Uh, this is a bit of a Rube Goldberg sort of uh, setup. This is basically the um, radius attachment, which you use for uh, putting a radius on a, something like a ball end mill. Uh, I've taken its, um, its tool holder off, which this piece normally sits on here for uh, holding end mills and that. I've taken that off and just clamped a thick piece of tool steel on there to hold the um, scraping tool. Now the pivot point's about here, so I'm, I've set a radius of roughly 50 millimeters for this tool. Um, and let's get at it. I was getting a lot of chatter, so to stiffen it up, I've clamped a piece of tool steel on top of it, shortened it maybe a little bit, so it's probably more like a 45 radius now, and put a second clamp on it. Let's see if that helps. I need to put a um, chamfer on the top of this to get right into the corners of that, um, that way. So I've turned the uh, radius attachment around it's to be able to tilt it up far enough to get, to get a decent angle on there. The Clarkson's a pretty cool tool, but like a lot of tools built by the English back in those days, it was uh, Whitworth fasteners, and it seems they used every single fastener size they could possibly find. So you need almost every tool known to man to be able to, uh, to adjust anything on this. Every Allen key, every uh, wrench. I, when I worked in the Air Force, we had um, Air Mackey aircraft made in Italy. And they had some metric stuff on them, like the ignition system. The airframe was mostly done with um, American across flats uh, sizes. But the engine was from Rolls-Royce, so it was Whitworth. I think these planes had sponsored by Snap-on written on the side of them. When I braced this on, it slightly rotated. So I need to, I've taken more off one side than the other. But once I flatten up the bottom, that'll be neutralized. I should have cleaned up the sides while I had it adjusted flat before. Now I'll have to readjust it. The other thing I'm not too thrilled about with the Clarkson is the wheel height adjustment. You loosen off here and then there's this big screw over the back, a hand screw, and you have to wind it down with that. But there's no, there's no height um, scale, there's no way of doing any accurate height adjustment. And of course it swings rather than going vertically, so it makes it that you can't really use the machine as a surface grinder. The last operation is cutting the bottom flat. Um, for that, I've swung the whole uh, table around 90 degrees. Well, nearly 90 degrees. I just see that it's actually off. And for this, I'm using a, a cup wheel, but the cup wheel doesn't sit far enough out. So for that, I'm having to use an extension, a spindle extension, which is also a standard item for the for the Clarkson. Unfortunately, when I've got my the spindle extension on, I, it doesn't get covered by my cover. I need to make up a new mechanism to hold this cover, which is more adjustable, to fit it where it needs to be. Another thing that's weird on my Clarkson is that this cross slide has a right-hand thread, so it turns the opposite way than what you'd expect from a lathe. I'm 
planning to replace the screw and handle and, and bearing block with the parts from that old Deckel G1L engraving machine because, because then I'll actually have an adjustment scale, a left hand thread and just much nicer parts. So there we have it, one nice small carbide tipped um, scraper which should be nice to get into the dovetails. I'll just need to give it a quick hone up before I actually use it but hopefully that should work fine. Classic sharpness test for a scraper blade is this one. A perfect manicure every time. Well my mate uh, George is going to be up half the night with his kitty and he's going to need something to watch so I'm going to uh, finish this video here and we'll come back next week for, um, for scraping in these ways. Once again thanks for watching, I'd appreciate a, a like or a subscribe. Uh, if you have any comments, any questions, please put them in the comments section. I really enjoy hearing from you guys and having a discussion about this whole project. So again, thanks very much.